What is going on, YouTube? Joe here with Culination Media, bringing you another episode of Pokemon X and Y Battle Spot Live. This is episode number five, but before we get started, before we get into everything, I would just like to say thank you guys for helping us reach our very first like goal, which was 50 likes on uh, Battle Spot number three. It was episode three, uh, so two days ago, uh, we did meet that like. At the time of recording, this is... Um, you know, when the fourth episode is going up, so I don't know if we made that like or not, which is also 50. You know, I figured we'd start off small, but it's just a cool little way that I can give back to you guys and keep two Wi-Fi uploads coming your way uh, if we meet those goals. Same thing applies to this video, so if we get 50 likes, two more Wi-Fi uploads, one 6v6, one battle spot, and it's just a way for me to say thank you for all your support and thank you for being so awesome because each and every one of you, you really are. You're all awesome. I love, uh, I love all you guys. So now, getting into this video, um, taking a look at the teams here, well not teams, my team, I only switched out two Pokemon from last time. I know I used the same team two episodes in a row and now I'm barely changing it, but I really feel like most of the team uh, that I used either just did so much work that I want to use them again, aka Machamp. Um, who did just an absurd amount of work in the first episode, or the first two episodes that we used them. Um, and then there was others that I felt that really didn't live up to the potential to what I thought they could do, a.k.a. Mega Aerodactyl, who literally died every time that we used them, and that is not cool in my book, so hopefully we can get uh, some usage out of that, and Amoongus as well, because Amoongus really didn't do a whole lot, so I'm going to try to use it a little bit more. And I might get the chance, seeing as how this first opponent... Uh, today's episode has a Quagsire and a Rotom Wash, both of which do not like grass types at all. We're also facing uh, Togekiss, who I absolutely cannot stand. I hate Togekiss more than Mega Gengar, more than Mega Kangaskhan. It is the bane of my existence. It really is. Um, we also have Aegislash, Tyranitar, and Blaziken going on here. So I'm guessing Mega Blaziken is going to be a thing. Um, probably not Tyranitar. I really don't see Mega Tyranitar too often on Battle Spot. It is possible, and I would welcome it. I prefer that over uh, Mega Blaziken, but we'll just see what happens. Um, if anything, I'm almost kind of happy to see the Togekiss. I know that's crazy for me to say, because I have like a personal vendetta against it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why Togekiss makes me so butthurt, but it really does. Um, I'd actually prefer to see the Togekiss over the Mega Gengars and Mega Kangaskhans that um, I've been seeing over the last day or two. It's just been like every off-screen battle that I've had has just had one of the two, and it just, it gets old after a little while. Uh, so apparently this is a scarfed Togekiss, because there's no way that Togekiss is outspeeding a max speed timid Electabuzz. Went for the Air Slash and missed, which is great, because I undoubtedly would have flinched if that hit me. So the question now is, should I go for a Volt Switch and switch out? Um, no, because then they're going to get a Switch Initiative. Really don't want that to happen. So I might as well just go for another Thunderbolt here. And then see who they bring in and then potentially go for um, a Volt Switch after that. Nobody on this team wants to take an Electric-type move, really. Um... I guess Tyranitar could because just of how, you know, especially bulky it can be, but there are no ground types, and that means I can just spam Thunderbolt and Volt Switch all day long with no consequences. Absolutely no consequences whatsoever. So Togekiss goes down, thankfully no flinch from the uh, Air Slash, which connected this time. Out comes the T-Tar, and I have to say, I think that was the easiest I've ever disposed of a Togekiss. It did absolutely nothing to me whatsoever, and I didn't get paralyzed, I didn't get anything. I haven't seen a Scarf Togekiss in a really long time either, so that was kind of strange. But, I don't know. I don't know, I got all upset over nothing. I just need to chill out. So I'm going to go for the Focus Blast on this Tyranitar, and in the sand that does really nothing, considering it's four times effective. Out comes the Earthquake. And, uh, yeah, Eviolite or no Eviolite, it does not make a difference. That base, like, 50 or 55 defense of Electabuzz is not going to be able to stand up to a T-Tar Earthquake. Not at all. That was, that was kind of bad. I did get the Focus Blast off, though, which is great. 
I was kind of afraid of using it. I knew it was going to die that turn. I was kind of afraid of using it because I thought I might miss. Because, you know, focus miss is a thing. Definitely is a thing. Unfortunately, I'm not bringing Machamp. Um, I've got Rhyperior and Amoongus as my other Pokemon here. I think I'm just going to go with Amoongus, though. Um, because I do not want to have to take a super effective Earthquake just to kill this thing. Almost positive that Titar will definitely outspeed Rhyperior. So I would have to take a hit. Even with Solid Rock, I don't I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Not feeling it at all. So I'm just going to go for a Spore Bed. It looks like they're going to switch out to Aegislash. So we're going to put Aegislash to sleep. To sleep. I don't know what I said. I'm having issues speaking today, as usual. Um, so that's great that they switched it in. Because the sleep counter, as far as turns, I don't think has started yet. So that is just absolutely great news. Now I can switch into Rhyperior, right? Because I literally can't do anything to this Aegislash whatsoever. Giga Drain is going to do nothing. And, yeah, obviously he's Im immune to, uh, whatchamacallit, Poison-type moves. But I do have the Earthquake with Rhyperior, so I kind of need to get on that. Aegislash obviously stays fast asleep that first turn, and I'm just going to go for the Earthquake. Both of her remaining Pokemon are weak to it. There's absolutely no reason for me to not go for it. And, oh, going for the stance change. I guess the Shadow Sneak? Well, no, maybe Aegislash would be faster. Yeah, pretty sure Aegislash would be faster than Rhyperior regardless. So it could have been Sacred Sword for all I know. Could have been Swords Dance, could have been King Shield, it could have been anything. It doesn't matter because Aegislash stays asleep. And then Aegislash goes down to that Earthquake especially because it was in uh, Blade form. So I guess it wasn't King Shield or Sword Dance. It had to be an attacking move. That is that. So out comes her, her uh, last Pokemon, which is that T-Tar that has taken quite a bit of damage, about 45%. And I don't think it can survive an Earthquake from Rhyperior. And I also don't think that Tyranitar can kill me in one hit. So it looks like we're going to get a W. And uh, coming in, we were at 6 and 3. Uh, on the series, so with this victory, that's going to bring us up to 7-3. and three. I'm loving the fact that uh, the 500 mark is quickly uh, becoming farther and farther away, in a good way, because it didn't really start off so great. Lots of ones and ones, and just, it took like three or four episodes to get a double victory, uh, and that was not cool, really not cool at all, so... Yeah, 7-3, that's, that's fine by me. Absolutely fine by me. So let's get into another battle here and hope that our luck continues. I really want to use Frostlass. I really want to use Frostlass really bad. I love Frostlass. I don't think it's going to be that good, uh, to be honest, on battle spots. It is a Focus Sash set, and it has um, Spikes and Destiny Bond, Taunt, and I believe Ice Beam. So it's, it's much better on a uh, 6v6 environment. But I just think it's an awesome design and actually just an awesome Pokemon. So hopefully uh, it can do some work. I just, I don't know. Maybe we can get some Dragon types. Well, there's one. Dragonite. Tyranitar again. And then Darmanitan, Scallopee, Driftblim, and Mega Kangaskhan. Of course. Of course, we cannot go a full episode without Mega Kangaskhan or Mega Gengar. Alright, so... Uh, who do I want to bring here? Machamp might be a good idea, because Machamp can take care of uh, Mega Kangaskhan, sort of. I mean, if it gives a dynamic punch off, Kangaskhan's dead. But they pretty much have to switch into that. I can't take a double return, I don't think. That's not going to work, especially at plus two. Mm, yeah, not going to happen. Frostlass seems like a good bet here because it resists a lot of the Mega Kangaskhan's moves. I'm almost positive that she's going to lead off with... Or I'm not sure if this is even a she. This person is going to lead off with Scallopede. I can feel it. I can feel it. And then uh, probably try to pass some boosts off to like Dragonite or Kangaskhan or something. Because it gets speed boost, so it can go for a sub or a protect and, you know, get that speed up. Uh, it might even be carrying Focus Sash, so I can't kill it in one hit, and it'll be guaranteed to get at least one Swords Dance up. And that is going to be... Uh, this is going to be an interesting, interesting battle. I don't know about this one. I'm not, I'm not feeling the mojo this time. 
And last battle I was. I was very confident going into the last battle. Not so much this time. So Driftbloom is actually going to start off things here as I start off with my Electabuzz again. Seeing as how there are no Pokemon that are going to be wanting to take electric type moves. And I have a good matchup here, so that isn't too bad at all. We'll see what this thing wants to do to me. I know I'll outspeed unless it's Scarfed. Probably not. Please don't be a minimized Drift Blim. Like, seriously? Please don't. Cannot stand that stuff. Um, I don't really know what Drift Blim does, to be honest. It's a really cool Pokemon, but I just, I, I don't face it very often. And I haven't really seen what it can do competitively. So I guess we're about to find out what this thing uh, is made of. And I'm just going to go for the Thunderbolt. I don't think that Volt Switch is worth it because it's not going to kill. So, wow, okay. That did a little bit more than I thought it was going to because of uh, Drift Blim's just massive HP stat. And it goes for the Minimize. No! Uh, I'm not carrying Shockwave. Not that I would ever, but... Uh, I'm just going to have to go for another Thunderbolt here. I think it'll kill from this range, even though it had the Citrus. But uh, I guarantee you I'm going to miss at least one move. Guarantee. Yep, there it is. I knew it. Ugh. Another Minimize. I, uh, this is not good. This is not good at all. And once it gets a couple more Minimizes up, it'll just go for Stockpiles, I'm sure. And it might even have uh, Baton Pass. So this could just be... Oh, no, I hit. I hit. Yes, okay. All right, we're in the clear. We are in the clear. Watch Scallopede come out next. But we got the minimized Drift Blim out of the way. So I am happy with that. Out comes the Scallopede, and that's exactly what I figured was going to happen. This team is very predictable. Uh, the next Pokemon that she's going to have is definitely going to be Mega Kangaskhan. So she's going to try to boost up with uh, Speed Boots and uh, probably Swords Dance. Sometimes these things like to carry... Uh, whatchamacallit? Yes, that. I um, can't think of it. Iron Defense. But I don't think that's what this particular one is carrying. Judging by that team, I'm going to guess it's going to be Swords Dance. So probably Sub or Protect coming this first turn. Uh, if it's Protect and I switch out, it's going to get another free Protect, and that is bad news. It's too much speed. Too much speed. So I guess I should just stay in and go for a Volt Switch and see what happens. See if it goes for a Sub. Yeah, it is just going to go for the Protect. I was really afraid of the Sub there because if I just Hard Switch out, then it gets a free Sub. I don't want to let that happen. So I'd rather just Volt Switch and have it do nothing to Protect than... Uh, let him get a free sub because that would be that would be very very bad to have Mega Kangaskhan behind a sub very very bad that's pretty much game at that point so he gets the swords dance off and I'm going to get a volt switch off and that does some decent damage to the scallopy and I'm okay with that absolutely okay with that the focus sash is gone if it's carrying it I don't know what they normally carry maybe black sludge I've never used a scallopede so not really sure and I haven't seen a lot of them either all right, so we got that Volt Switch off, and now it's about who are we going to go into. I've got uh, my Frost Lass here, so we're going to go with that. We're going to go with the Frost Lass and break that in. Um, and maybe what I should have done, the better move, would have been to just switch out directly to uh, Frost Lass on the first turn when he protected, because I do have Taunt on this thing, and that would stop the Baton Pass and the Sword Stance. I mean, it would outspeed after the Speed Boost the first time. So I guess I wouldn't be able to stop the Sword Dance, but I'd be able to stop the Baton Pass. And I can't really do anything about that now. I can try to Taunt, but I don't think that's going to do much. My best bet is probably going to be... I'm going to say Ice Beam. So that's what we're going with. And actually, he's going to Protect again to try to get another Speed Boost, even though it's unnecessary. So I just went for the Taunt. Why not? Why not? Ice Beam should be coming here now. Um, well, not Ice Beam should be coming. I'm going to go for the Ice Beam. The Baton Pass should be coming here is what I meant to say. So there goes that Baton Pass, and it's almost certainly going to be Mega Kangaskhan. I can feel it deep down inside that it's going to be Mega Kangaskhan. So I don't know what that says because it's Japanese, but it is Mega Kangaskhan, and that is pretty much game. I don't have anything to take this on, especially with all these boosts that it has. 
uh, what is it at? Like plus three speed right now? Plus three speed, plus two attack. Yeah, I've got nothing. I absolutely have nothing. I don't know if this thing is carrying Sucker Punch or not. Sometimes they carry Crunch. I know that. Uh, sometimes they carry Earthquake. I don't know what this thing is running. I know it can't uh, go for the Return, the Fake Out, uh, or the Power Up Punch because I uh, not resist, but I'm immune to all of those moves. And that is great. So I'm guessing a Dark type move is coming. That would make the most sense. So, I can go for a Destiny Bond here because it way outspeeds me uh, with all of those speed boosts. And I do have the Focus Sash, so I'm guaranteed to survive at least one of these hits. Uh, oh, no, I'm not, because it's going to Mega Evolve and get two hits off on me. And I'm not going to survive. Why did I think that? Oh, I am so stupid. Wow, okay. So, it actually has Rock Slide and not, not the Dark type move. So there goes the Focus Sash on the first hit, and the second Rock Slide gets a crit just to kick me in the nuts. Frost Last goes down. Yeah, my basically, basically my only strategy against this thing was a Flood strategy because it hits twice, and why was I not thinking of that? That is the whole reason that Mega Kangaskhan is broken in the first place. And for some reason that slipped my mind. I am really stupid sometimes. Really, really stupid sometimes. The only good thing is that Rock Slide is now disabled on this uh, Mega Kangaskhan, which is good news because my other Pokemon is Aerodactyl. So that would be its only super effective move on Aerodactyl. Um, it could go for like Sucker Punch or Crunch, as I mentioned. I'm going to be immune to Earthquake, and I'm going to resist uh, Return or whatever normal type move this thing is carrying. That being said, my defenses are pretty low. I really don't have decent um, physical defense I don't have decent special defense either but that doesn't matter at this point so this is just bad news this is bad news I don't think I can do anything to this thing I can go for a stone edge on the mega evolve and that's really all I can do to it because I have aerial ace aqua tail and roost and none of those are going to be able to kill this mega kangaskhan so I'm pretty much just screwed here pretty much just screwed I guess I could have forfeited a while back um, because there was really nothing I could do at that point, but I don't like forfeiting. Uh, I feel like it's, not that it's disrespectful, I don't think it's disrespectful, but um, I don't know. I just like to play matches all the way through because sometimes I surprise myself by pulling out wins at the last minute because you don't know what's going to happen. You just never know if there's going to be some kind of you know, crazy, wacky crit or uh, your opponent doesn't make the play that you think they're going to. You just never know. So, yeah, he goes for the power-up punches there. It doesn't quite kill me, but Stone Edge does not kill Mega Kangaskhan. So, there's not much we can do about that. This thing outspeeds us and can go for pretty much any move that it wants other than Earthquake to kill us. And, oh, I guess it's not going to kill us. Apparently, they just wanted to DC. I mean, I get a loss for that, but I was going to get the loss anyway, so I'm not too offended. Why would you DC there? Why would you do that? Unless it was just an internet problem. That makes absolutely no sense. It's not a problem on my end, right? No, I'm still connected to the internet. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go again. We're going to do another battle. Bonus battle. I'm not counting that in our record at all. No, so we're still 7-3. and three. <laughs> Still 7-3. and three. Uh, Actually, no. No, we're going to count that because I definitely lost. Um, if we DC, like, towards the beginning, there's no clear-cut winner, I won't count it towards the record. But, I definitely lost that match. Um, so, yeah, that would just be squirming out of it if I didn't count that one. That match was definitely lost. Uh, there was nothing I could do. Even, it was beyond the point of even getting a crit to help me win. Uh, so we are 7-4 and four now. Alright, on to the bonus battle. And it's going to be a long episode because we're almost 20 minutes in and we're doing a bonus battle. But I don't like the way that last one ended. I'm not happy with that. So let's see if we can get another victory. We've got, uh, I was about to say Fortress. Why did I want to call that Fortress? Ferrothorn, Talonflame, Rotom Heat, Azumarill, Mega Kangaskhan again, and Garchomp. So, um, Mega Kangaskhan is obviously coming because they bring that in every battle. So we need to prepare for that. And, 
Um, well, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, uh, I don't know. Every battle that I've, or every trainer that I've seen that has Mega Kangaskhan always brings it, so that's why I said that. But maybe this will be different. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, but some of these Pokemon are some refreshing faces. Oh, well, maybe not. I've seen a zoom roll so many times. Rotom Heat is something I haven't really seen, so that is pretty cool. Two fire types here, so I might want to just uh, set up some stealth rocks, actually. Especially for that Talonflame. If I can get rocks up before that uh, Talonflame comes out, I will be in really, really good shape. And that might be my best chance to win, honestly. Um, although, if they bring Mega Kangaskhan, I really don't have a counter for it on this team. That's a huge problem. At least it's not going to be getting, like, tons of speed boosts and attack boosts, but... Anyway, alright, so I'm going to lead off with Rhyperior here, because I feel like that's the best choice. Rhyperior just uh, either walls or destroys a good portion of this person's team, so... Rhyperior, it's time to do some work. Come on, you need to come through for me here. So I could go for the Stealth Rock here, and I think I'm going to, because we've got Rotom Heat and uh, Talonflame that could both be coming, or one or the other could be coming. I really feel like Talonflame for sure is going to be coming. Uh, and we're actually just going to trade rocks, so we both have uh, rocks up on the field. That is unfortunate, because I did bring Frostlast to this battle, so not only is it uh, super effective, and uh, going to take away 25% of her full health, but it's going to break her Focus Sash, so I don't know how useful Frostlast is going to be in this battle, and that's unfortunate. I really wanted to see Frostlast do some some major work. Not going to happen, I guess. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to speak too soon. Not at all. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Earthquake because I really don't have anything else I can do to this thing. And I get a crit, and that does a lot of damage. In comes the Bullet Seed. Bullet Seed Ferrothorn, ladies and gentlemen. Very interesting. And that does a crap ton of damage, even with Solid Rock. Wow. That is way more than I thought it was going to do. Thankfully... They only hit twice, because if that hit like four times, maybe, I would have been dead. Absolutely destroyed. I got a little bit lucky there, not going to lie. Uh, so I don't know if I can stay in here. Um, I might not have a choice, though. If I go out into Frostlast, I'm going to get absolutely destroyed. So that is not a good time for me at all. So yeah, I'm just going to go for the Earthquake. Unfortunately, Rotom Heat does come in. And the Levitate, obviously, is going to uh, cause Earthquake to do nothing. So that is that. Rotom Heat does take a good amount of damage from Stealth Rock, though. So that is awesome. And if I can get this thing to switch in and out a lot... I don't know why it's even coming in on a Rhyperior. I can easily kill this thing with a uh, Rock Blast or Stone Edge or, you know, whatever he thinks that I may be carrying... I, I am actually carrying my Rock Blast. I have Dragon Tail as well, so Dragon Tail might actually be uh, useful in this battle, depending on who his other teammate is, because we haven't seen the third team member yet. And he does get up the Reflect, so Reflect Rotom Heat. Very, very interesting. I don't see lefties. Um, with a move like Reflect, it's definitely not a choice uh, item that he's holding, so he might be holding the Light Clay, actually. Might actually be holding that, so... Yeah, that's going to be a Reflect that's going to stay up for a long time. I did go for the Dragon Tail here, so it's great that he's switching. Absolutely wonderful, because I'm going to do some damage to that Ferrothorn. Not very much, because it is a resisted hit. And I am going to take Iron Barb's damage. Rocky Helmet 2? Nope, doesn't look like it. No Rocky Helmet damage. And Talonflame is the other team member. Absolutely incredible. I'm so happy that I brought Rhyperior right now. So, so happy. And that Talonflame absolutely just gets obliterated by those rocks. And it can't do anything to me unless it has Will-O-Wisp. And I've seen a couple on Battlespot that do carry Will-O-Wisp, but it's actually a pretty decent move for Talonflame to carry. So it's possible that it's carrying Will-O-Wisp, but I don't think I can afford to switch at this point. I really do not. Um, yeah, because Talonflame can't do anything to me. So I might as well just stay in and go for the Rock Blast. It's going to go for the U-Turn, so that, I don't know. I feel like that screams Choice Item. Maybe it is Banded? Doesn't make a lot of sense for Talonflame to be Choice Scarfed because of the priority Brave Bird. 
So I'm gonna say that that's Choice Bandit. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it definitely didn't take Life Orb damage. Uh, we didn't get to stay in long enough to see, or it didn't stay in long enough for us to see if it was lefties. Anyway, yeah, with the Reflect up, Rock Blast is going to do absolutely nothing to Ferrothorn. We hit it four times, but it does nothing almost every time. We just barely get it into the red zone. And that's going to be enough for Earthquake to take it out. So I don't know what... Well, maybe not. Maybe not with the Reflect. That Reflect up, it might not. I mean... Yeah. I mean, it did a little bit over half the first time that we used Earthquake. But that was with no Reflect and a crit. So I don't know that it's going to kill. He's going to go for the Leech Seed here. And that is a bit unfortunate. So I'm just going for that Dragon Tail. I wanted to have to take more damage coming in. And I... Kind of figured that Elite Seed might be coming because it can't really do anything else to me other than Gyro Ball. And that really wouldn't do too much. And I mean, I guess if it had Power Whip, I'd be dead by now, but I think it would have used it a long time ago. So Dragon Tail was the best move um, because with the Reflect, I don't think it was going to die. It was just going to get that Elite Seed recovery, and that is not cool at all. Unfortunately, however, my Rhyperior is definitely worn down uh, from the Elite Seed and just... Now, all three of his team members, honestly, just ganging up on it. And it's taking hit after hit after hit. Um, this Rotom Heat is almost dead, but I I don't know. It could be a Resto Chesto set. It's very possible that it has, like, Reflect and Light Screen and Rest. And then maybe just have Volt Switch? I don't know. I've never seen a dual screen... Rotom Heat before, or Rotom Anything before. Uh, so I'm going to switch into Machamp here. And uh, he's going to put up the Light Screen, which is absolutely fine by me. That was basically just a waste of a turn. I'm not going to use Special Attacks on you right now. Uh, not with Rhyperior, not with Machamp. So, let's see, I could go for the Dynamic Punch. I don't really think anything wants to take a Dynamic Punch. Um, although I could go for a Knockoff. I could definitely go for a Knockoff. Um, overheat is coming, and I am a Salt Vest, so I take that very, very nicely for being such a high-powered move with Stab. Dynamic Punch hits, not going to kill because of that Reflect, unfortunately. Uh, but we do get the Confusion, and Rotom does outspeed here, so I'm going to have to take another hit or hope that Confusion is on my side. The Hax Gods usually are not on my side, though. And I do not like having to rely on them. Um, I don't like relying on hacks at all. I don't like it when it's done to me. I don't like doing it to other people. But I guess what it comes down to is that you just have to dish it out sometimes. And sometimes you have to take it. It's just part of the game. And unfortunately for uh, Rotom, he's going to get hit by Confusion there. And Knockoff is going to finish him off. Which is great for me, not so great for him. And we do knock off that light clay, so that is interesting. It was just an interesting overall set, to be honest. I'm really curious as to what his other move was. Uh, it could have been rest, although that seems kind of strange without a, a chesto berry or anything like that. Lumberry, whatever. It was probably like Volt Switch or some electric move. Something like that. I've just, I've never seen a dual screens Rotom before. I'm seeing all kinds of stuff that I haven't seen recently. Or not, not recently, but at all. Uh, so I'm going to switch into Rhyperior here, even though I have the priority for this Talonflame, and he only has, like, 1 HP left. Um, he also has priority with Brave Bird, so his priority would be faster than my priority, and there's no reason to have Machamp get killed here for no reason whatsoever. So we're just going to switch into Rhyperior, have him take that Brave Bird. He doesn't take it very nicely, but Talonflame does go down to the recoil. And the Reflect is also going to wear off, so that's perfect timing. We should be able to kill this Ferrothorn very easily. And now that I'm looking at that damage that the uh, Brave Bird did, I'm almost positive that that was a banded Talonflame. Almost positive. That did a lot of damage for it being resisted and for the high defense that uh, Rhyperior has. And it looks like we're going to get a victory here because our opponent is going to forfeit the match. It was going to be over the next turn anyway. There was nothing he could do as far as getting any kind of like crazy luck or hacks to uh, sway the match. Uh, he would have had to, I don't know, outspeed Rhyperior and Machamp and get crits and all that stuff. So that was not going to happen. So we get a win there. So we are 2-1. and one. 
this time, which is not too bad at all. Not shabby. Not too shabby. Not shabby. That is not... Oh, that is not English. Not too shabby is what I meant to say. Uh, so that brings our record up to 8-4. and four. Hopefully next time if we can get a double victory, which would be awesome, we'll get into the double digits. I'm looking forward to that. Um, last thing, uh, just remember about that like goal. If we get this up to 50 likes, we'll bring two more uh, Wi-Fi uploads for you tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. But thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you for the next episode. But until then, game on.